Have you ever thought of walking on the surface of Venus, or even just an up-close look at its landscape? While NASA set its sights on the Moon and outer planets, the Soviets looked at the inner solar system for over 30 years investigating the hellish inner planet, Venus. The USSR's Venera program gave us a peek into the surface of Venus with pictures. Stick around as we explain the discoveries. Venus is a hot and hellish planet, nearly 465 degrees Celsius dotted with mountains and volcanoes that rise towards sulfuric acid clouds. The Earth-sized planet could be considered our twin, if not for its dense, toxic atmosphere and surface temperatures that are hot enough to melt lead. Despite the extreme heat, researchers have long wondered if any living organisms existed or could exist on Venus. The USSR was one nation with the ambition to explore the planet. When the space age began during the 1950s, the Soviets worked to design and assemble a series of probes for Venus. And for almost three decades, they built and flew the Interplanetary Space Probe as part of the Venera program. The Venera program successfully launched 10 probes into Venus's surface between 1961 and 1984. Due to the extreme surface situations on Venus, any craft sent could only survive for a short time on the surface, ranging from 23 minutes to two hours. The first Soviet venture was a flyby probe, launched on February 4, 1961, but failed to leave the Earth's orbit. So, the Soviets announced the launch was a heavy satellite, because of the Soviet policy of not announcing details of failed missions. The probe is also known as Venera 1VA. The first probe in the series of Soviet Venus missions weighed an impressive 1,400 pounds. The Soviet Union built the Venera 1 probe, and to stabilize it, was packed with instruments including a magnetometer and Geiger counters. Venera 1 and Venera 2 deliberately flew past Venus without entering orbit. When Venera 1 launched on February 12, 1961, telemetry failed seven days after launch. Still, it is believed to have passed within 100,000 kilometers of Venus and remains in heliocentric orbit. Venera 2 was launched on November 12, 1965, but it also suffered the same telemetry issue after leaving Earth's orbit. There were other attempts at Venus by the Soviet Union in the early 1960s, but they were failures. Hence, they didn't officially receive the Venera designation. When the Soviets launched the Venera 3 probe mission, it became the first human-made object to impact another planet's surface as it crash-landed into Venus in March 1966. The Soviets retrieved no data from the Venusian atmosphere because the spacecraft data probes had failed upon penetrating the atmosphere. On October 18, 1967, Venera 4 became the first space probe to measure another planet's atmosphere. The spacecraft first showed that the major gas of Venus's atmosphere is CO2. Initially, the Soviet Union claimed that the probe had reached Venus's surface. However, when it was verified again, including with data on atmospheric occultation from the American Mariner 5 spacecraft, which passed Venus a day after its arrival, the assertion was refuted. Venus's surface pressure was shown by the spacecraft to be between 75 and 100 atmospheres, which is substantially higher than Venera 4's 25 atmosphere hull strength. With the information from Mariner 5 on the crushing atmospheric pressure, the Soviets launched Venera 5 and 6 as atmospheric probes into Venus. These crafts were designed to scrap half their payload before entering the planet's atmosphere. They succeeded in entering the atmosphere and recorded 53 and 51 minutes of data, respectively, as they slowly descended by parachute before their batteries failed. During this time, it became increasingly obvious that Venus was unlikely to have any liquid bodies of water. Still, the designs for the Soviet Venera probes kept considering the possibility of a water landing as late as 1964. The Soviet Union would keep upgrading upgrading its spacecraft to land successfully on Venus. The Venera 7 probe was successful in a way, because it was the first one designed to survive Venus's surface conditions and make a soft landing. However, an internal switchboard failure limited the scientific output of the mission. Despite this failure, the control scientists still succeeded in extrapolating the pressure from the temperature data to 465 degrees Celsius, which resulted from the first direct surface measurement. The Doppler calculation of the Venera 4 to 7 probes was the first evidence of zonal wind with high speeds of up to 100 meters per second in the Venus atmosphere. Along with pressure and temperature data acquired, Venera 7 also measured atmospheric composition. Venera 7's parachute failed shortly after landing very close to the surface, 
It impacted at 17 meters per second and toppled over, but survived. This failure caused antenna misalignment, making the radio signal very weak. But despite that, it became the first human-made probe to transfer data from the surface of Venus. The probe provided details about the surface of Venus, which could not be seen through a thick veil of atmosphere. The spacecraft confirmed that humans could not survive on the surface of Venus. In addition, it excluded the possibility that there is any liquid water on the planet. Two years after the Venera 7 launch, Venera 8 was launched, with an extended set of scientific instruments for studying the surface. The spacecraft transmitted data during the descent and landed in sunlight. It measured the light level with no camera, so we couldn't get any images. The craft transmitted data for almost an hour. Surprisingly, Venera 8 made some important geochemical contributions that further support Venus's status as Earth's sister planet, despite our inability to observe the planet's surface from space. Venera 8 also made some eye-opening discoveries about the visibility on Venus's surface. Not only was Venera 8 the first entirely successful landing on another planet, but it was also the second artificial object to touch down on Venus. The Soviet Union sent Venera 9 and 10 to the Venusian surface in 1975. As expected, the uncrewed spacecraft made a soft landing on Venus and sent back the first photograph taken from the planet's surface. Despite several cameras on the probe failing due to their lens caps not coming off, a few managed to take and transmit the first images from the surface of our solar system's second planet. The image showed rocks and smooth boulders strewn around the landing site. The space probes relayed data on the thick cloud cover, atmosphere and soil characteristics of the Earth's nearest planetary neighbour. According to an official announcement from the Soviet press agency, the craft functioned for only 53 minutes on Venus's surface after spending four and a half months on the 186 million miles journey. It was not clear whether the automated probe had gone dead after that time or not. Venus's surface is one of the most hostile environments in which man has sent one of his machines to explore. Venera 9 reported that the temperature is at 905 degrees Fahrenheit, more than twice the melting point of tin. Conventional radio circuitry would disintegrate at this temperature and the paper would burst into flame. Soviet scientists were excited over the landing especially the unexpectedly clear photograph transmitted. Even the Izvestia magazine printed the picture on its front page and ran an interview with scientist Boris Nepoklonov, who marveled at the sharp edges on angular rocks. Even the moon doesn't have such rocks. He said they thought there wouldn't be any rocks on Venus, and if there were any, they would get washed away by erosion. However, this was not the case, as the edges of the rocks remained sharp. The early images captured by Venera 9 and 10 are unsettling. They show an arid and rocky alien terrain that stretches out beyond the horizon in sharp, crisp and spherically deformed images due to their wide-angled lenses. However, the photos also captured the lander's edges, revealing their uniquely Soviet design. Venera 13 and 14 were similar to the earlier Venera 9 to 12, but more advanced. Each spacecraft had a decent lander that held most of the instrumentation and electronics, and a flyby spacecraft used as a communications relay. They carried instruments to get scientific measurements of the ground and atmosphere once they landed, including cameras, a microphone, a drill and surface sampler, and a seismometer. They also had instruments to record electric discharges during its descent through the Venusian atmosphere. The two landers landed about 950 kilometers apart, with Venera 13 surviving for 127 minutes, while Venera 14 surviving for 57 minutes. The Venera 14 lander accidentally threw the camera lens cap right under the arm used to test how hard the surface is. It returned information about the compressibility instead of the surface. On March 5, 1982, the last of the Venera probes sent to the planet, the Venera 14 craft successfully landed on the surface of the solar system's second planet. It worked for 57 minutes, conveying a color view of the surrounding area. 40 years later, this panorama is still the last image from the surface of Venus accessible to scientists. Despite the hellish conditions of Venus, the Soviet Union planned and sent various probes into the planet to catch a glimpse of how the planet looked.